Hey, what is going on YouTube? Dan Spee here, and today we're gonna do our first episode of what I'm gonna call the Early Bird Special. It's where I speak about what investments I think you should be making a few weeks before the roster update happens to make sure that you can get in on the ground floor and maximize the amount of stubs that you are making. We're gonna be looking at cards that currently make sense to buy that you're not gonna be taking a loss even after the cards upgrade. Before we continue, one quick thing. If you're enjoying the content or you're finding it helpful, please do me a favor, click that subscribe button, that notification bell, and a like. It helps the channel grow immensely and it helps me to be able to create more content as I can put more time into the game. Back to our regular scheduled programming. I'm pretty much only going over cards that I think that are 100% gonna be upgraded so you will be making stubs no matter what if you invest right now. I'm mainly only gonna be talking about cards that I believe that are gonna be going from silver to gold or from gold to diamond or even a low diamond to a high diamond because that's where you really need to get in the ground floor so you can make some stubs even if it's via quick selling after they're upgraded. I did a ton of card flipping yesterday to get some of these cards that I really, really want that I think are going to be upgraded to make massive gains. I'm looking to make millions of stubs on the next roster update, and the only way to do that is to start to get in now. There is some risk involved because maybe over the next two weeks, these players take a nosedive and fall off the charts, but the players that I'm going to be talking about today have been so phenomenal. Even if their production does dip a tiny bit, they're still going to get upgraded and you're still going to make stubs. So it might be, are you going to make double the stubs? Are you going to make triple the stubs? Are you going to make maybe 50% of the stubs? Either way, you're going to be making a lovely return on your investment. Let's get into it. Now, I'm giving a little disclaimer. I'm not guaranteeing that these players are going to be upgraded to the exact numbers that I think they're going to be upgraded to. I can't possibly know that. But playing MLB The Show, Diamond Dynasty since 2016, I have a pretty good idea what's going to happen with the roster updates. You can check my previous roster update and see how correct I was on most of the cards that I put up there. And I think I was right on all but one card. So you can go check out that video if you're a little skeptical of some of the things that I'm saying. First, I'm going to go over the cards that I invested in yesterday, just so I'm putting my money where my mouth is, and I can show you that I'm also investing in these cards. First card we're going with here is Brandon Marsh. He's been at the top of the list on OPS pretty much the entire season. We are, what, six weeks into the season right now, and we're approaching the next roster update, and he hasn't really been slowing down. He's been in the top five in OPS, generally in the top three in OPS, with an OPS well over 1,000. He's been keeping up this production with a high on base percentage, high batting average, with a pretty good o with pretty good slugging to boost up that OPS. I think he only has five dingers. We're going to take a look at his stats in a second, but he has a lot of extra base hits, and he's getting on base, and he has pretty decent defense here. As you can see, he's got, actually, you can't see. As you can see, he's got 80 defense. So since he has pretty good defense, it's going to be easier for him to be upgraded. Now let's go look at his statistics. Now let's look at Brandon Marsh right now. He's had the 329 batting average, 418 on base percentage, and a 1065 OPS. If we look at his splits on this season, he's hitting righties and lefties pretty evenly. Actually, he's hitting lefties a little bit better. Now, I will have a little disclaimer that in the past week, last seven games, he has not been hitting as well so that is the newer trend so do keep that in mind it's probably why his price has fallen a little bit but i do expect him to get a large upgrade and if he turns this around you can easily turn around a small sample size in just a couple games i think he should easily be upgraded to gold just because he's been so good for so long this year so far and he was really good at the end of the year last year for the phillies once he got traded also, if you're looking at the differentials right now, you can buy him now for 325 and to sell now for 227. It's a pretty large one, so you could actually flip this card right now a lot. Something that I was actually doing a lot yesterday. I've kept my number at 250, 251 the entire time, but I was buying 10 more and selling 10 on and off, on and off, just to bumping up my stub count. And I'll show you why I was bumping up my stub count yesterday. You see, I did some big moves. So you do want to look at the cards and the large differentials here because honestly, if he goes gold, which I think he has a good chance, even though he's only a 73 right now you're still gonna be making about 170 stubs on each investment if, if you quick sell next guy on this list that you should be investing in now is jorge mateo jorge mateo is on a torrid streak you can't even see his statistics for some reason in the leaderboards i'm not sure why it appears he has enough at bats and plate appearances 
So I'm not so sure why they are not showing him in the leaderboards on MLB.com. I I really can't figure out why. I thought maybe he got hurt for a little bit and he missed some games. He doesn't have enough plate appearances or at-bats. It's not, it's not the case. So I'm not so sure why he's there. And I think it's actually why some people are sleeping on Mateo right now. But if you look at his differentials right here, they're pretty good. 1085, 891. It's a pretty low risk right now. Another good card to flip. You want to make roughly, let's see... Roughly 100-ish stubs, a little more than 100 stubs on each flip, and he's moving pretty quickly. So this is the second card I've been investing in a lot. So I do think he's going to go diamond. He doesn't even have to continue this torrid streak that he's not going to show you his stats right now. Mateo currently has a 347 batting average, a 395 on, on base percentage, and a 1062 OPS. He's got six home runs on 25 hits. He's just doing absolutely amazing things, not even talking about the 10 stolen bases here. We look at his splits through the last 7, 15, and 30 games. They're excellent across the board. And if you want to look at his left-right splits here, his left-right splits, he's hitting lefties and righties pretty, pretty evenly here. Pretty evenly here. A little more on base percentage with and batting average against lefties, but a little more power against righties for roughly the same amount. A 1070, 1053 for an overall 1062 OPS is absolutely fantastic. And the reason why I think this guy is definitely going diamond mainly is because of his speed and his defense are already so high and his hitting attributes are so low, which I'm going to show you right now. Now, Mateo was one of the big ones that I spoke about on my last roster update for the same very reasons that I didn't think they were going to upgrade his offensive stats that much, but his defense and his speed boosts his card so much because he's a shortstop, which is a defensive first position. So it boosts that overall so much. That's why you have guys like Francisco Lindor who are still at 85, even though they're hitting like 220 right now with only pop from one side of the plate because the defense is so high, it keeps that overall up. Mateo here, st statistics are significantly worse I mean, his attributes are significantly worse than Francisco Lindor's attributes, even though his statistics in real life are significantly better. And we're looking at a pretty large sample size at this point as he's approaching 100 at-bats, and he will have 100 at-bats by the time the update comes out. So I do believe that Mateo will get upgraded to at least an 85. And if he gets upgraded to at least an 85, that means he's going to be selling quick selling for 3000 and he might even go higher than that so maybe he could go to an 86 and the quick sell for 3500 or even higher who knows but my guess is he's probably going to go to an 85 overall at the next update meaning if you invest in him now you're going to be making 2000 stubs on each one you're going to be making over 200% stub profit on each investment so invest in this card now pictures that i was investing in heavily yesterday at a much lower price than they're currently going for but it's still a really one a really good one to get in on the ground floor here thinking if you think he's going to go to an 80 an 85 overall become a diamond you'll still be doubling your stubs pretty much on every investment that you make right here so he's still a good investment to do right now Sonny Gray I'm going to show you his stats in a second they're absolutely disgusting and I'm going to and I'm going to explain to you why I really think he's going to be a diamond he was also in my last roster update prediction when he's a 75 overall and i think he's going to go up to an 85 this time so we're looking at his attributes here he's got 80 hits per nine 74k per nine and 64 walks per nine none of these statistics are very good at all i mean none of these attributes are very good at all but when we look at what he's doing in real life right now we can kind of say oh he's gonna get upgraded across the board in these things now, Sonny Gray is clearly leading the league in ERA right here, but ERA doesn't really do much for pitchers in the video game because they base it off hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, and walks per nine are the big ones that you have to look like look at, especially in terms of what's affecting the player. There are going to be some other things that affect the players overall, like how many home runs they're giving up and such. Like Sonny Gray hasn't given up any home runs, so they might boost up his home runs per nine, which is going to make it even more easily for him to be upgraded, even though that doesn't really affect the card in game. But we're going to look at the things that are going to affect the card in game as well as the overall attribute upgrades. So if we're looking at Sonny Gray right here, and we're looking at his whip. His whip is a 106. So he's giving up just barely over a walk or a hit uh, per innings pitch, which is absolutely fantastic. Which is, if you're looking at what's going on here, so we'd see his hits. So he's giving up less than a hit per inning, and he's got 80 hits per nine. So I think that's going to get bumped up probably to like an 85, maybe a little bit higher than that. And his walks per nine is actually uh, pretty good also. So not amazing, not amazing. So it's about... Uh, 
three walks per nine. It's it's not amazing by uh, any means, but his walks right now are 64 walks per nine on his attributes, which is extremely, extremely low. So that might get a bump as well. But for sure, the strikeouts are going to get one. He's got 35 innings pitched, 41 strikeouts. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, let's take a look right here. Pretty sure that his, yeah, his strikeouts per nine are only a 74. So that's going to get bumped up as well. So I would be shocked if Sonny Gray does not get bumped up to a diamond after this update. As you can see, I have uh, 67 of him and I bought most of them. Actually, I pretty much bought all of them at 900 stubs. So I'm looking to make a really, really nice... Uh, profit stub profit on this investment now we're looking at my big boy investment that'd be none other than zach gallon who is currently on i believe a 28 or 29 scoreless inning streak he's been absolutely fantastic and he's pretty much a no risk right now to buy he's most certainly getting upgraded at least two which you'd be making a profit right there but it's possible he goes up to a 90 which would get him up to an 80 he's doing absolutely amazing things right now and i was getting in on the ground floor and i got so many of this card for like 3050 stubs which is a little bit above quick sale so it, it was virtually no risk now is there a little risk involved right now Sure, he's going for 39, he's buying now for 39, and there's a sell for 33.80 currently. But you'd still make a profit if you were flipping this card. That's a good thing to look at. If you can make a profit right now in case you get cold feet, you could do it. And he's also been doing such amazing things right now that I, I can't fathom this card not getting some sort of boost. At least two tiers, which would net you at least, what, like, like, uh, a 12, 1100 stub gain on each card right here. So, I... Unless you think he's going to have a couple games in a row where he goes like five innings and gives up five runs in each, which I highly doubt with all the disgusting pitches and how just amazing he's been on the mound right now. I think he's a surefire 88 to 89. And given that Garrett Cole was upgraded to a 90, I think an 88 or an 89 is pretty good right now if he just keeps his statistics where they are. If he gets better then forget about it. Sky's the limit for this guy. He's doing amazing things. So let's look at his attributes and why I think he's most certainly going to get upgraded to a, to a large extent. So he's got 87 hits per nine, 68K, and 76 walks per nine with 66 home runs per nine. So the only thing that here is that's relatively high is the hits per nine. So that will probably still get a jump, but a smaller jump. But let's go look, take a look at the other things. So looking at good old Zach Gallon here, that ERA is a 2.15, and I'm pretty sure it's a 2.15 from one start, or maybe it was two starts, but whatever it was, he, he didn't start the year off too well, but he's been amazing since. So I'm not really too concerned about the ERA because there's no direct correlation to attributes on players with ERA. The whip is the big one that they look like they look at how how often how many guys they're walking in inning, how many hits they're giving up, how many home runs they're giving up. These things do do do, do all affect the overall hits, walks, and strikeouts are the big things that affect the biggest things that affect their overall though. So we look at we look at Gallon here. He's got 37.2 innings pitched and 51 strikeouts already. This is a guy that is 68 case per nine that case per nine is going to jump up a bunch is it going to jump up to this rate no because they go on their career rates as well but it's going to jump up a ton all right now let's look at look at some of his uh, more in-depth statistics here okay so we can see right here his first two starts were poor bad start four innings pitched five earned runs second one was six innings pitched four earned runs and he's given up nothing since Oddly enough, they uh, show his stats a little bit better on the main page over here than they do when you actually click on his thing. But let's let's go across here. And you're looking at Zach Gallen at 37 innings pitch, 24K, so much less than one hit per nine innings. He's only given up five walks, five walks in 37 innings. That's phenomenal to go with 51 strikeouts for 37 innings pitched. He is going to go up across the board on this. The opponents are only hitting 178 off, and he's pretty much been unhittable for four starts, and I see that continuing to go. Get in on Zach Gallen now. He is going to explode, okay? You need to be buying this card right now. I have 84 of him right now. I am trying to get at least 100, because if this card actually does go up to a 90 overall, I'm pretty sure a 90 overall is an 80,000 quick sell. That's crazy. I would be hit the quick sell button and I would have 800k stubs if I just had 100. So I'm going to try to get more than that. So 
these are the cards so far that that I've actually invested in. There's some other cards that I have not invested in because the price points, you're not going to make as much profit, even if they are as likely to go. All right, so Matt Chapman is currently going for 29 on the sell and 31 on the buy now. Actually, let's see. He, he's, he's being upgraded to an 87 today with plus 13. That's a lot of plus 13s to get to 87, but he has amazing fielding. So, because of that amazing fielding, it's easier for them to upgrade him. So, truth be told, he's definitely going diamond. I, I don't see what's going to happen in the next two weeks that this guy is not going to go diamond. So, at 2,900 right now, worst case scenario, if you're buying him at 2,900, 2,903, you only gain 100 on each investment. Chances are he's going to go up to at least an 86 or possibly that 87 here because he's hitting 385 and he's hitting great against both. His power hasn't been great, but I don't think they're going to downgrade his power. They just upgraded it. I don't think they're going to downgrade it, but his contacts are going to shoot through the roof. So my guess is that each contact is going to be over 82. Okay. Some might be as high as uh, 90 against, against lefties, I believe. Let's take a look at that real quickly. Look at, let's look at Chappy stats and see what we think he's going to do. So let's look at let's get a little more in depth on uh, Max uh, Matt over here. Let's look at these. Uh, wow, he's hitting a 458 in the last seven games. Small sample size, but still, you can't totally discount it. And let's go take a look at his uh, his right left splits. All right, so he's hitting what? He's hitting 536 against lefties. So that is going to shoot. Through the absolute roof. Now, I don't expect him to still be hitting 536 in two weeks, but it still should still be pretty high. Worst case scenario, probably the high 300s. And against righties, he's hitting he's hitting 324, which is also great. He's got a 1460 OPS against against left-handed pitching. So expect that to shoot up like crazy. Okay, he might be a uh, 90s across the board against left here, and he might be 80s across the board against right. He's gonna go diamond for sure. And not only is he going to go diamond, I think more than likely he is going to become a pretty high diamond, uh, probably to the 87 or 88 overall. So I think he's actually an excellent, excellent investment to go through right now. What did Kevin Gossman do over here? Why is he supercharged? Struck out 13 Mariners across seven scoreless innings. Okay, let's see. Let's look, look at his marketplace right now. Uh, yeah, don't invest in this card. Wait, may wait maybe a few days, and with the supercharge, he actually might be a good card to flip. All right, so that is the end of the first episode of the Early Bird Marketplace Investment Special. We're gonna work on the name a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with the Early Bird. That is the the end of the episode. Mainly, my thing was to show you the cards that I'm investing in. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I want this series to be about showing you what I actually feel is gonna be and what I'm willing to take risks on so then you can make an educated decision if you want to take those risks as well and obviously as it goes through we'll see how right i am on all these things and you guys will begin to trust me more and more on your investment opportunities all right that is the end of the video if you found it helpful please do me a big favor click that like button it helps the channel grow immensely the support has been really really good lately and i'm really really enjoying making videos for you and uh, yeah, keep coming and I'll keep making them. I'll catch you on the next one.